Today we're going to be talking about how to use midpoint rule to approximate the double integral. And in this particular problem, we've been given the double integral, which is the region that lies above the rectangle defined by the x interval from 0 to 2, by the y interval from 0 to 1, and lies under the function x e to the negative x y. So essentially, what we're going to do is use midpoint rule to approximate a volume. Remember that when we were dealing with just one variable, we used midpoint rule to approximate area. So we had an xy coordinate plane like this, and we had some function like this, and we used midpoint rule to divide this section into rectangles, this area into rectangles, and we would take the midpoint of this rectangle right here, and we would add all these midpoint values together and multiply by the change or the width of each rectangle, delta x, and we would find area under the curve. Well, now when we're dealing with two variable functions, multivariable functions, we're going to find volume instead of area. So we've just added an additional dimension. And what we're going to do to approximate the area is first draw the region specified here by this rectangle. So r equals, whenever you have r equals and then two intervals like this, it's always the x interval by the y interval. So if we draw an xy coordinate plane this time, like this, and we call, let's just mark off some points here, we call this 0, we'll call this 2, we'll call this 1, and then we'll say that this is 1 up here. All right, so now we're going to draw this rectangle. It tells us that the x interval lies between 0 and 2, so starts here at 0 and goes out here to 2. The y interval starts at 0, again at the origin, and goes up to 1. So that those intervals defined the boundary of our rectangle. So we can go ahead and draw this rectangle like so. Our volume sits on top of this rectangle and below this function here defined in terms of x and y. So we draw our rectangle like that and then our next step is to divide this rectangle into some number of smaller rectangles. And the way that we know how to divide up this rectangle is given to us by this piece of information here, that m equals n equals 2. This means that we're going to divide our rectangle into two rectangles by two rectangles, in other words, four smaller rectangles. m and n are not always equal to each other, but in this case they are. If they're not equal to each other, then m tells you how many rectangles you need to fit into the x interval, n tells you how many rectangles you need to fit into your y interval. But in this case, it's 2 and 2. So since it's 2 and 2, we're just going to divide this evenly, so straight in half. So the height here is 1, so here at 1 half, we're going to divide our rectangle lengthwise like this. And then since our large rectangle is 2 units wide, we're going to divide it in half here at 1. So right in half, and then in half again both ways. And now notice that we have two rectangles across by two rectangles tall. That's because we were told to divide it into two rectangles wide by two rectangles tall based on this m equals n equals 2. So now we have our four rectangles, and since we have that, we can now find midpoints of each one of these rectangles since we're using midpoint rule to approximate volume. So the midpoints we can just draw roughly here. But what we want to do is identify the coordinate points of each one of these. So this coordinate point here is halfway between 0 and 1 for the x value of the coordinate point. So that means that the x value here is going to be 1 half. The y value is halfway between 0 and 1 half, so the y value is going to be 1 fourth. For this point here, again our x value is the same, 1 half, but our y value is halfway between 1 half and 1, so it's 3 fourths. These other two points here, this one, for the x value, halfway between 1 and 2, that means it's going to be 1 and a half, or 3 halves, and the y value is 3 fourths. And for our fourth coordinate point here, the x value again is 3 halves, and the y value again is 1 fourth. So now we have each of our midpoints, our, our coordinate points that represent our midpoints. And all we need to do to approximate the volume that sits on top of this large rectangle here and below this function is plug in each of these coordinate points to our original function, 
take the sum of the result of plugging each of those in and multiply the sum by delta A. Let's talk about delta A for one second. So remember that when we were dealing with one variable, we were talking about the area here and we would you know, divide this region into rectangles like this and we would find the area. Well, in that case, when we had one variable, we were dealing here with delta X and that was just the width of each rectangle like this. Well, now that we have a three-dimensional space, we're just going to add, again, one dimension to that. We can't just account for the width of the rectangle like this. We also have to account for the height of the rectangle. So delta A is equal to the width of one of our small rectangles multiplied by the height of one of our small rectangles. Your rectangles are always going to be the same size, so you can pick any one. But this rectangle here goes from 1 to 2, so the width is 1. It goes from 0 to 1 half, so the height is 1 half. So delta A is 1 times 1 half, which is equal to 1 half. So now to find volume, to find the volume that sits above this large rectangle and below this function, what we're going to do is take delta A, which we just found to be 1 half, and we're going to multiply that by the sum of the function evaluated at each of these four coordinate points. So what we're going to do is say F of 1 half one fourth plus f of one half three fourths plus f of three halves one fourth plus f of three halves three fourths. And we're just going to evaluate the function at all four of those points. So when we do that, here we'll get one half. Now, if we plug in one half one fourth to our original function x e to the negative x y. Notice that we have this x value here out in front, so that's going to be 1 half. We'll plug in this x value of 1 half. Then we're going to get e to the negative x times y. Well, negative 1 half times 1 fourth is a negative 1 eighth, so we get e to the negative 1 eighth. Now let's plug in 1 half 3 fourths. We're going to get plus 1 half e. 1 half times 3 fourths is 3 over 8, so we're going to get negative 3 eighths. Then we're going to get plus 3 halves e. 3 halves times 1 fourth is 3 over 8, so again, negative 3 eighths. And then plus 3 halves e. 3 halves times 3 fourths is 9 eighths, so we'll get negative 9 eighths like this. And now it's just a matter of simplifying. So we can simplify this. We can factor out a 1 half. We can find common denominators. Let's simplify it a little bit. Notice that we have e to the negative 3 eighths and e to the negative 3 eighths here. 1 half plus 3 halves is just 4 halves. Let's go ahead and cancel this out and call this right here a 4, and we'll just leave it like that. So we actually have 4 halves e to the negative 3 eighths. Now if we factor out a 1 half from each term here, we can get 1 fourth in the front because we get 1 half times the original delta A 1 half that's out in front here. So we'll get 1 fourth times e to the negative 1 eighth plus 4 e to the negative 3 eighths plus 3e e to the negative 9 eighths. So you can see how we can start to simplify this. We could move our e to the negative 1 eighth, negative 3 eighths, and negative 9 eighths all to the denominators of their respective terms and turn those into positive exponents. And we could find a common denominator and all that kind of stuff and simplify it. But really, whenever you're dealing with an approximation, you really just want to give a decimal approximation. So if you plug this whole thing into your calculator, what you'll find is that the volume is approximately equal to 1.1514 if we just take it at four decimal places. So that's the approximation of the volume, which is perfectly acceptable since we were asked to use midpoint rule just to approximate as opposed to give an exact answer. So using it to approximate the volume that lies, remember again, above this large rectangle and below this function here. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.